You have to be a Hindu to go in. You have to be born in a Hindu family in India. So the temples in that part of India, they're very conservative. They don't allow foreigners in. Okay, so Lord Chaitanya, he, he stayed the night there at the Alanath temple and in the morning he said goodbye to all the devotees who had come with him and he told them, you go back to Jagannath Puri. So he embraced them and then he turned and then he left to start on his tour to South India. And then they all fainted, they all fell on the ground because they did not like to see Lord Chaitanya go away and leave them. But Lord Chaitanya didn't care, he just kept walking, he didn't come back to see them. So Lord Chaitanya left and he went with the, the Brahmana Krishna Das. Krishna Das carried the water pot for Lord Chaitanya. So the devotees, they were there, they stayed there in Alanath one more night and they fasted. And then next day, then they went back to Jagannath Puri. So Lord Chaitanya was in ecstasy on because he's traveling and Sankirtan, he's doing Sankirtan, although he's just, just him and one other person, Lord Chaitanya was chanting the holy name and dancing in ecstasy. What do you think he was chanting? How would he chant? What would he chant? Anybody know? Tani and Shamamantalo. Oh, Tani and and that sounds like Krishna, 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 Krishna. Yes, very good. <laughs> Think some more. Do you know the next line? Krishna, 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 Very good. Okay, so Lord Chaitanya was chanting like that. And whenever he saw someone, he would say, Hari, Hari. And what would they say back to him? They would also say, Hari, Hari. So Lord Chaitanya would become very happy when they chanted the holy name. So 
Sometimes Lord Chaitanya would embrace people. And he would tell them to go home. With, he, would, he would embrace them and give them spiritual potency and tell them to go home and get the people at home to chant. So after Lord Chaitanya had embraced someone, then they would go back to their village and they would get the whole village to chant. People would become mad in ecstasy of love of Krishna. So wherever, whenever he saw anyone, he would tell them, chant the holy name of Krishna. So all the villages, all the people in the villages became devotees of Krishna. And then people from the other village, they would come to see and they would also become the Bodhis. So this way, the, in this way, the whole place, the whole country became devotees. All the people of South India, they all became devotees. All, all the people became Vaishnavas. And whenever they saw Lord Chaitanya, they, they, they would be embraced, he would embrace them. Lord Chaitanya was he's walking, so he walked through many villages. And every village he would have to beg some alms, he would beg some vegetable, some rice, so he could eat. So many people heard about this sannyasi who's coming. So they would all come, they all wanted to get the blessing of the sannyasi. So this is the mercy of Lord Chaitanya, that everyone could become a devotee. So Lord Chaitanya traveled like this, all the way from Jagannath Puri, all the way down to the very south part of India and converted everybody to Vaishnav. He never did this in Navadvi, but he did it in South India. Prabhupada explains that some places are better to preach than others. Some places, Prabhupada said, just like he was preaching in, in India, he couldn't get any result. But when he went to America, he got results. So Prabhupada said, we should go where we can get some result. Sorry, my wife. We should go to preach. When we, when we want to choose a place to go to preach, we should pick a place where we can get some result, where the people will be interested. Yeah. 
You go to some, some places, some parts of the world, you go to people are not interested. So we don't need to waste our time. We have to use, go to places where you get some result. So wherever Lord Chaitanya went, he did like this. He was traveling everywhere, he was chanting the holy name and he would get people to chant the holy name. So then Lord Chaitanya left Jagannath Puri, he went to Alanath and he came further south and he, they came to a holy place called Kurma Shetra. Who knows what Kurma is? What, what's the form of Kurma? Okay. Okay. Yeah. The kurma, the turtle, the, uh, the turtle. Yeah. So there's a temple, famous temple there. And Lord Chaitanya saw the deity, he offered prayers and obeisances to Kurma, Lord Kurma Shetra. This, this is temp this temple is taken care of by the Ramanuja Vaishnavas. It's an, it's an ancient temple. It's, I think, maybe a thousand years old. Because Ramanuja, Ramanuja came there and he developed it. It was already there. When, he, when Ramanuja first came there, he thought it was a Shiva temple. But then he found out it wasn't Shiva, the deity wasn't Shiva, he found out it was Kurma. So Ramanuja was very happy that it was a deity of Lord Vishnu, one of the incarnations of Lord Vishnu. So Ramanuja developed the puja there, made a nice temple. So when Lord Chaitanya was at this place, he was also very happy in to be in the, to see the deity and to chant and dance. So if Lord Chaitanya was chanting and dancing and people came, everybody, local people all came to see him. And just by seeing Lord Chaitanya, they became devotees and they also began to chant Krishna's name. And they began to, they would raise their arms up in the air and they would chant, Hare Hare! Hare Hare! 
Did you all raise your arm? Did you put your arms up in the air? Put your hands up in the air? Yeah, Hari Hari. Hari Hari. Ecstasy now, make it in the, the, everybody in ecstasy. Right. Chanting the holy name, everyone became a Vaishnava. And the holy name filled the ears of all the people. The holy name filled the ears of all the people. So then the, the priest came, the priest from the deity gave Lord Chaitanya some prasadam and some offerings. So there was one village nearby to the temple and there was a brahmana there whose name was Kurma and he invited Lord Chaitanya to come to his house. Right, we have some Kurmas in our Krishna, in Hare Krishna temple, in the Krishna movement, we have Kurma Das, a bra proper disciple, and we have, we have many Kurmas. <laughs> so this Brahmana brought Lord Chaitanya to his home and washed his feet, and all of his family came, and they all drank the water which washed his feet. Lord Chaitanya not wearing any shoes. He's a sannyasi, just walking barefoot. So his feet will be. His feet will be all mud. And so the custom is to wash the feet. And sometimes that water which washes the feet, you can put a few drops on the head of people. But this Brahmana was very devoted and the family, they all drank, drank the water which washed Lord Chaitanya's feet. So the Kurma Brahman fed Lord Chaitanya. He, pre they pre he and his wife had prepared a big meal for Lord Chaitanya. And after Lord Chaitanya took food, then the family, they took the remnants of Lord Chaitanya's prasada. Mm -hmm. 
So then the Brahmana began to pray to Lord Chaitanya. He said, Oh, you've come to my home. I'm very fortunate. Your lotus feet have entered into my home. I'm so fortunate. My family, my birth, my wealth have all been glorified today by your presence here. So then the Brahmana said to Lord Chaitanya, Please be merciful to me and take me with you. I want to go with you. I cannot tolerate materialistic life anymore. It's so miserable, so much suffering. I want to leave my family, go with you. Hmm? So sometimes we also feel like that, devotees, you know, we feel that, oh, what, I'm suffering so much, this material world. So what should we do? Should we just leave the family? Well, you have to consider what is your age. If you are a young man, you cannot just leave the family. But if you're 50 or over, then you can go to forest and live in Vrindavan. That's for the men, not for the women. <laughs> Yeah, we don't let the women come and live here in Vrindavan. Women have to stay at home, be taken care of by their family. Anyway, this, this man we're not told we're not told how old this man is, this man Korma. But Lord Chaitanya said to him, Don't speak like that again. Lord Chaitanya Okay, Lord Chaitanya said, Better you stay at home and chant the holy name of Krishna. It's not a good thing to suddenly just leave home. You can prepare for leaving home gradually, but not before the age of 50. And husband can take the wife with him. So Lord Chaitanya told the Brahmana that you should follow the order of Krishna.
These, the orders of Krishna are given in the Bhagavad Gita and the Srimad Bhagavatam. You have to follow these teachings. And you should become a spiritual master and try to liberate everyone. You may not have to give initiation, but you can give instruction. So everyone's supposed to do that. And Lord Chaitanya told the Brahmana, if you follow this instruction, then you, you, you will make advancement. And you will always have my association. So you have to understand what is your duty. So Lord Chaitanya would often go to people's homes to take prasadam. And he would always <laughs> preach like this to them. He would tell them, you don't need to leave home, just stay at home. But he told Yari Deki Tarikaho Krishna Upadesh. Amara Gaya Guru Hana Tare Desh. Lord Chaitanya told the man, wherever you go and whoever you meet, tell them about Krishna. So when we follow the teachings of Krishna like this, then we will make spiritual progress will become also a spiritual master. So Lord Chaitanya, wherever he went, he would, he would accept food, people would give him food, and he would tell them the same thing he told the Brahmana Kurma. Wherever you go, whoever you meet, tell them about Krishna. And in this way you become the guru. So it's a very important, very famous instruction. Okay. So Lord Chaitanya then uh, So when Lord Chaitanya left the, the Kurma Brahman's home, the Brahmana followed him, but Lord Chaitanya would send him back. He said, you go home. You don't come, don't follow me. You should go home, stay at home. So then there was another Brahmana there also, whose name was Vasudev. And he had, and, and he, had, he had leprosy in his body. And this, his body had worms living in it. 
And if a worm would fall out from his body, he would put it back in again. So he, he was a very, a very advanced uh, brahmana, although he had this disease. So this brahmana heard about Lord Chaitanya and he came to try to meet Lord Chaitanya. But when the brahmana came there to the home of, where, of, of Korma where Lord Chaitanya was staying, Lord Chaitanya had already gone, he'd left. So when Vasudev heard Lord Chaitanya is gone, he fainted, he fell down. And while the Brahmana Vasudev was still lamenting that he could not see Lord Chaitanya, just then Lord Chaitanya returned and he came back and he, then he saw the Brahmana there on the floor. So Lord Chaitanya saw the Brahmana there and he touched him. And as soon as Lord Chaitanya touched him, all the leprosy and the disease in his body, it all disappeared and his body became very strong and very good looking. So the Brahmana was really amazed, he saw that the disease had gone, and so he began to offer a prayer from the Bhagavatam. Very nice prayer from the words of Sudama Brahman when Krishna embraced him. So Sudama said, Who am I? A poor, sinful friend of a Brahmana. I'm not a Brahmana, I'm a friend of a Brahmana. Mm -hmm. And who is Krishna? He's the Supreme Lord. He's Bhagavan with all the op six opulences. But he's so merciful with his two arms. He, he has embraced me. So this is like this uh, Brahmana Vasudev uh, saw his body was changed, so he told Lord Chaitanya, he said, oh now I'm very worried. He said, because I've become proud that I received your mercy, you've cured me. So I may become proud. So Lord Chaitanya told the Brahmana, so what you have to do, you have to constantly chant the Hare Krishna mantra. And you also have to 
uh, hear about Krishna's pastimes and how Krishna. So that if you chant all the time and if you always tell people about Krishna and the glories of Krishna, then you'll never become proud. And Krishna will accept you as his devotee. So after Lord Chaitanya gave instruction to Vasudev, then Lord Chaitanya disappeared from that place. So the, the two brahmanas, Kurma and Vasudev, they are left alone without Lord Chaitanya. They embrace each other and begin to cry. So Lord Chaitanya uh, saved Vasudev from that disease. So Lord Chaitanya got a special name for that pastime. So I said, everybody who hears the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya like this, you'll very soon get the shelter of the lotus feet of Lord Chaitanya. Okay, so then after Lord Chaitanya had visited the temple of Kurmakshetra, then he went. Then he went to see famous deity of Lord Nishinga. The place is called the Jiyada Nishimha. So this was a, this temple of Jaya Nishinga, it's near to Vishakapatna, a town called Vishakapatna. And the deity is always covered in sandalwood. So when Lord Chaitanya came to the temple, what's he going to chant? He has to chant to the deity. Shri Nishinga, Jai Nishinga, Jai Jai Nishinga, Praladesha Jayapada Mukha Padma Bringa. Right, this is, this is how we sing it, the temple at Vishakhapatna. So Lord, Lord Chaitanya is singing these songs to Lord Nishingadev. He's coming to see the deity of Lord Nishingadev. So he sings a song glorifying Lord Nishinga. Ugropi anugram evayam svapattanam nare keshari keshareva svapottanam 
Anji Shamukra Vikramaha Srina Sringa Jaina Sringa Jai Jaina Sringa Praladesha Jaya Pada Mukha Padma Bringa So although Lord, Lord Nishinga is very ferocious, lion is very ferocious, but still very kind to their own cubs. So this Lord Nishinga Dev is very ferocious to Haranyakashipu, but very kind to Prahlad Maharaj. So Lord Chaitanya went to see the deity and the priest brought flower garlands and prasadam offered to Lord Chaitanya. And the Brahman invited Lord Chaitanya to come to his house and take prasadam. So Lord Chaitanya then continues to go on. And then gradually came to the place of the, where the river Godavari is flowing. Right? When we chant, when we take a bath, we chant the names of all the holy rivers. So Lord Chaitanya saw the Godavari and he thought, well, oh, he remembered the Yamuna. And he saw the. And he saw there's some forest at the side of the river, it was just like Vrindavan. So Lord Chaitanya took his bath in the holy river. And he was chanting the holy name. And so at that time, then a group of people, a group of people all came, and, and there was music being played. There was a big procession, and somebody was being carried on a palanquin. Some important person was coming on a palanquin to take bath in the river. And so many brahmanas were following, and in the palanquin was Ramananda Rai. So Ramananda Roy took his bath and offered oblish, offered oblish, offered a, made oblations to his forefathers for their benefit. So Lord Chaitanya had heard about Ramananda Rai. Who had told Lord Chaitanya about Ramananda Rai? Anybody remember? Yes? Who? She? Uh, she, 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 uh, yes, right. Sarva Bhuma Bhattacharya. Yeah. Is that, is that. Sarva Bhuma Bhattacharya said, when you go to South India, this is very, very great devotee. He's an important government officer. His name is Ramananda Rai. 
So Lord Chaitanya was very anxious to meet this Ramananda Roy. And Ramananda Rai, when he saw there's a sannyasi there bathing in the river, he also came to see the sannyasi. He wants to offer his respects to the sannyasi. So when Ramananda Rai saw Lord Chaitanya, Lord Chaitanya was like, he was so effulgent, he was like a hundred suns. Right, he's in the saffron dress, the, the cloth of the sannyasi. And he's got a big body, he's very big sized body and very strong. How old is he? Do you remember? Yes, right, twenty four, right. So Ramananda Roy came, he saw the sannyasi, he fell down on the ground, offered full obeisances to him. And Lord Chaitanya told him, get up and chant the holy name of Krishna. And Lord Chaitanya was actually eager to want to embrace him. So he asked him, are you, this, are you Ramananda Rai? He said, yes, I am that, I am your very low servant. Mm. He said, I am from the Sudra community, family. Our family is Sudra. But Lord Chaitanya came forward and he embraced him very firmly. And they were both feeling so much love, they almost fell unconscious, they almost fainted. They had natural love for each other. Of course, who is who is Lord Chaitanya? What's his who is he in the spiritual world? Krishna and Radha Rani combined together. Yes, right. And who is who is Ramananda Rai? Ramananda Rai is Krishna. Yes, Vishaka, right. Vishaka is a very dear friend of Radharani. So when they both embraced each other, they were in so much ecstasy and they were chanting the holy name of Krishna. The bodies were shivering and trembling, their hair was on end, 
and they were shedding tears. So there was Ramananda Rai had come there with many brahmanas, and these brahmanas were, you know, they were not really devotees, they were materialistic brahmanas. They were following the Vedas, but they were not following it like what we follow it. So when they saw Ramananda Rai and Lord Chaitanya embrace like that, they were surprised. They thought, wow, look, look this is unusual. And they thought, you know, this sannyasi, how he can embrace Ramananda Rai? Ramananda Rai is a fourth class person, he's a sudra. And this brahmana is, uh, br he's from the high, he's a brahmana. So how is it he can embrace him? Because they're they're very attached to the bodily conception of life. They're thinking Brahmana high class, Sutra low class. But devotee doesn't think like that. Devotee thinks everybody's equal. The Brahmana is a part of Krishna and the Sudra also is a part of Krishna. And Ramananda Rai, although he was in a Sudra family, born in a Sudra family, he was highly educated and the king had made him the governor of Madras. He said, this Ramananda Rai is actually, he's, you know, he's very learned and he's a, um, he's a very big scholar of the scriptures. But he's touched, but he's become, he's, after touching this sannyasi, he's become like a madman. So Lord Chaitanya could understand what these brahmanas were all thinking. So he controlled himself. And he, he told Ramananda Rai, he said, better if you can come back alone in the evening, we can talk in private. And Lord Chaitanya told Ramananda Rai, he said, you know, the Bhattacharya told me about your good qualities and he told me I should meet you. So I came here just so I could meet you. Yeah, without making any effort, Krishna arranged that you came here and I'm here and we could meet. Uh, 
So Ramananda Roy says, oh, that Bhattacharya, he thinks of me as his servant. He thinks I am his servant. <laughs> anyway, by his mercy, I've been able to meet you, Lord Chaitanya says, or Ramananda Roy says. By his mercy, I have met. So I'm very fortunate. It's been my lucky day. And I know you give mercy, Ramananda Roy says to Lord Chaitanya. I know you give special mercy to the Bhattacharya. And today also you've touched me, although I'm, un I'm people shouldn't touch me, I'm untouchable, I'm a low, pa low class person. Ramananda Roy tells Lord Chaitanya, you are, you are the Lord, you are Narayan, I'm only a government servant, I'm just a worker. I'm the lowest person. So, you, but by your embracing me, you may get a bad reputation. Because you have, you have embraced me, you may, you may get a bad reputation because I'm low class and you're very high class. Yes, yeah, sannyasi is not meant to mix with, they're not meant to give association to sudras. But by your mercy you touch me. But according to the Vedas, you shouldn't have touched me. But you've come here to give me mercy and to deliver me. And I know that's why you go to people's houses, you have no other business than going to their home only to give them Krishna consciousness. So sometimes devotees will do like that, they'll go to the homes of the householders and try to give them Krishna consciousness. He doesn't go to their home for his benefit, he's not going to get anything for himself, he's going to give them benefit. <laughs> so Ramananda Rai told Lord Chaitanya, he said, I've come here with about a thousand men, including the brahmanas. I said, I think they've all been purified just by seeing you. Everybody's chanting the holy name. Everyone's very happy. They're in ecstasy. 
那每个人都放松正念，每个人都都在欢喜当中，都非常高兴。Ramananda Rai tells Lord Chaitanya, he said, from your features and your behavior, I can understand you must be the Supreme Personality of Godhead. No ordinary person could be like you. So then Lord Chaitanya replies to Ramananda Rai. And Lord Chaitanya tells him, You're the best devotee. Just by seeing you, I've become purified. Lord Chaitanya said, I'm a Mayavari sannyasi, I'm not a devotee. But I'm I, I mean I still have I'm I still have love of Krishna simply by touching you. I have love of Krishna. And but the Sarva Bhoma Bhattacharya knew about this and this is why he told me to meet you. So in this way you know, Ramananda Rai was praising Lord Chaitanya, Lord Chaitanya was praising Ramananda Rai. So while they were talking like this, a Brahmana came, a devotee Brahmana came, and he offered obeisances and he asked Lord Chaitanya, to come and take lunch at his place. So Lord Chaitanya saw that this Brahmana is a devotee, so he thought, yeah, okay, I'll come there. But he, first he spoke to Ramananda Rai, told Ramananda Rai that I want to hear about Lord Krishna from you. So, so I want you to come and meet me again. So Ramananda Rai asked Lord Chaitanya, he said, you please stay here for five or seven days and we can meet and we will talk about Krishna. So in this way, Lord Chaitanya and Ramananda Rai separated. And Lord Chaitanya went to the Brahmins and took his lunch. And then in the evening, Ramananda and Roy and Lord Chaitanya were to meet again. So this time Ramananda Roy came with only one servant. Lord Chaitanya didn't want him to bring all the devote, all the brahmanas with him again. So they began to talk about Krishna. So Lord Chaitanya asked Ramananda Roy, he said, Tell me a verse from the scriptures about the goal of life. 
刚刚所说的那个 Ryan， 他说你从经典中告诉我一个师姐，就是生命的目标是什么？<笑> So Ramananda Rai immediately said, "Well, if you follow the duties of Varnashram, that will give you Krishna consciousness. That will help you to get Krishna consciousness." So. Lord Chaitanya said, uh, well, first of all, Ramananda Rai quotes the full verse and he says that there's no other way to satisfy Krishna. You must follow the Varnashram. By worshipping Vishnu, we want Lord Vishnu. We worship Vishnu by following the Varna Ashram, by doing our duties according to the Varna and Ashram. Yeah, the, if you can, if you're a brahmachari, you follow all the duties of the brahmachari, then it's very pleasing to Lord Krishna. Or if you're a brahmana, a kshatriya, vaishya sutra, you do your duty. Do it properly and for the pleasure of Krishna. There are duties, there are different duties for people in each varna and ashram. But we have to follow the duties. And if you do them properly, then Krishna is pleased. So Ramananda Rai said, this is the ultimate perfection of life. But Lord Chaitanya said, mm, he said, this is only external. Tell me some better, other way. Something better than Varnashram. Varnashram, that's just only you know, what we see doesn't show the real mood of a person. So then Lord Chaitanya says, tell me some other way. So this time Ramananda Roy says, offer the results of one's work to Krishna. This is mentioned in the Bhagavad Gita. Yad karoshi, yaj asnasi, yaj chahosi dadasi, yad yad tapasya sikuntiya tad karushva mad arpanam. All that you do, all that you eat, all that you offer and give away, as well as all austerities you may perform, do them as an offering to me, Krishna. Offer, offering to Krishna. Yeah. 
哎，就是不要当工人的细节说到，不管你吃什么，不管你做什么，不管你不吃什么，不管你做什么苦行，这一切都应该作为对我的供奉而去做。嗯。So to follow Vanashram in the Kali Yuga, that's very difficult. So Lord Chaitanya did not accept. When Ramana Narayi said, follow Vanashram, Lord Chaitanya said, give some other way. So when Ramana Narayi said, so Ramananda Rai gave this verse from the Bhagavad Gita. Which chapter? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. Nine twenty-seven. Who? Sandini Mataji said. Oh, really? Very good. Okay. So try to offer means. Offer the results of our work to Krishna. And at the same time, you remain in your position, you follow the Varnashram, do your duty. So the thing is, Varnashram is not transcendental. It's for the material world. But de devotional service is transcendental. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is from the spiritual world. Haribo, Saradia. Are you okay? Have you got your mic? Haribo? Can you repeat? Yeah, I said Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is from the spiritual world and he's come to spread the Sankirtan movement which comes from, from the spiritual world. So he wants to hear about the spirit, spiritual activities. But if we just offer the results, if we say, offer the, uh, if we say, uh, do everything as an offering, and so people may offer to anybody, they may offer to Shiva, they may offer to Vishnu, they may not know who is the Supreme. So when he said offer the results, it's not clear what exactly we should do. So Lord Chaitanya said, this is also external. You have to go further. So, 
So then Ramananda Rai gave other verse from Bhagavad Gita that we should give up all our duties in the Vanashram. He said, This is perfection. So, that's a very famous verse in the Bhagavad Gita. Where Krishna says, Surrender everything to me. Give up everything, surrender to me. But this is not still not satisfying Lord Chaitanya. Because people may surrender for some material reason. Some people think becoming a devotee means to have an easy place, have a good place to eat and sleep. They get they think one man came, he said, I want to surrender. And they asked why. He said, I want to get away from my wife and family. I have, so, I have many children. I, want, I don't want to stay home and take care of them. And so Lord Chaitanya said, well, this is still not pure devotional service. Because people have, the people may surrender, but their motive is not to please Krishna. So, Lord Chaitanya asked him, go ahead and say something more. So then Ramananda Roy said, devotional service with knowledge is the essence. And he said, this is from Bhagavad Gita, Brahma Bhuta Prasanatma Nasochati Nakanchati. Samasarveshu Bhuteshu Madbhaktim Labhate Param. Also, 18th chapter, where Lord Krishna is saying that one who is transcendentally situated realizes the Brahman. Haribo? Right. So this is not still not yet pure devotional service. This is this is bhakti, this is jnana bhakti, and this is devotion mixed with knowledge. It's not pure devotion. So Lord Chaitanya wants to hear a verse which describes just pure devotional service. Mm. So Ramananda Rai has an, a verse from the Srimad Bhagavatam, 10th canto. And mm. 
and he describes it, he quotes this verse, that one should simply remain in whatever position one is in. And he should be in the association of devotees and hear about Krishna. And he should follow the principles of devotion. And in this way, he said, Krishna said, in this way you can conquer me. Although Krishna is never conquered, he becomes conquered by the pure devotion of his devotees. So when Lord Chaitanya heard this, he said, ah, yes, this is pure devotion. You don't need to change your situation. Just stay where you are and hear about Krishna. Okay, we will stop here. Are there any questions? Well, Lord Chaitanya gave reasons why he didn't want to take many people with him. Yeah, he told Lord Nityananda, he said, you know, he said, I gave you my danda, my sannyasi rod, you lost it. She asked uh, why Chandramabu didn't uh, want Ramananda Rai to bring many people with him. Ramananda Rai? Huh? Raman, yeah. Ramananda Rai didn't want it. Oh. Chandramabu uh, first the meeting, uh, oh. Ramananda Rai, many Brahmana, many people followed him. Oh, but, okay. Uh, in the evening, he yeah. yeah, because. Lord Chaitanya saw these brahmanas who were with Ramananda Rai, they were not, they did not understand the transcendental nature of the relationship between Lord Chaitanya and Ramananda Rai. They were materialistic brahmans. <laughs> And Lord Chaitanya wants to talk about confidential things which these people will not understand. All of these other people, they were not devotees. And Lord Chaitanya, Lord Chaitanya is going to speak to Ramananda Rai. They're going to discuss things with, which are quite advanced, very advanced. So Lord Chaitanya doesn't want them present when he's talking to Ramananda Rai. Just like when Lord Chaitanya was discussing topics of Krishna, 
very confidential topics of Krishna, he only talked with three devotees, three and a half devotees. Three men, three men and one woman. One was Ramananda Rai and the other two. The other one was Swarup Damadar. And then one man called Siki Mahiti. And the woman was the sister of Siki Mahiti. So they were very senior, very confidential associates of Lord Chaitanya. They, Lord Chaitanya would talk about Krishna to them. He wouldn't just talk to yeah. everyone. But for the ordinary people, there would be kirtan, chanting of the holy name. Let everybody chant the holy name and hear about Krishna. Hear about Krishna from the Bhagavad Gita. First they have to learn the basic things. Before they could hear all the advanced knowledge, they have to hear the basic things. Haribo? 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 Sarajira Okay, Okay, are there any more questions? Right. We don't need to, we, we don't make advancement just by changing the situation abruptly. Yeah. 
Sometimes people think, oh, I cannot make advancement in this ashram, I have to change my ashram. They're not, not chanting regularly, they're not hearing regularly, and they think if I change my ashram I will make advancement. It's not true. So Lord Chaitanya Lord Chaitanya's associates, many of them were in the householder ashram. Lord Nichananda, Advaita, Srivas, they were all householders. And Chandrasekhar, Tapana Mishra, Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya, they're all householders. They're all very advanced devotees. Ramananda Rai is a householder. He's a very, very advanced. So Lord Chaitanya is showing that uh, it, it's not the ashram which is important. What's important is that we engage in activities of hearing and chanting. So Lord Chaitanya did not approve of people just changing their... Just like we saw Lord Chaitanya when he was at Kurmakshetra, the Brahmana wanted to leave his home and go with Lord Chaitanya. Lord Chaitanya said, no, this is not the way. Of course, if one is in old age and if one has been practicing and preparing for renouncing the home, then you can do it. In older age, your material responsibilities are reduced, then you can take up more spiritual responsibility. Okay. 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 Thank you. Okay. Hi, how you went, Ima? Hi, I see. I see. Yes, they are missing here. So, is our accept my business word. So, the Papa said that uh, the but Varna Ashram, uh, Varna Ashram, so we still have, uh, we still have half to complete. So how to properly understand and practice and fulfill the Papa's desire, this desire? 
So Prabhupada was, con was concerned for those people who cannot follow the regulated principles. That they should be given some opportunity to progress, and the way in which they can progress is by following Varnashram. It provides some engagement, practical engagement for people who are not able to just live in the temple and be brahmacharis or sannyasis and pujaris. They, they want, they have to do something different. Hmm. So, in other words, finding some suitable work for people that they can be engaged, and they can maintain their family, they can have a job, they can earn some income, and they can have some association with devotees. This way, then they can gradually advance. Gradually they can try to, you know, they can, maybe, maybe they're not able to follow four principles, they're not able to chant sixteen rounds, but they're able to come closer to devotional service. So this is some work, this is still going on within ISKCON. We're trying to implement more opportunities, more Varnashram situations, provide more engagement for people that they can be somehow connected to Krishna consciousness. Okay, is there any other question? So far, no other question. Okay, so we can stop here. We'll continue from this point tomorrow. Tomorrow morning. Tomorrow is Zhao Shan, yeah? Okay. Same time. Yeah. Thank you. Srila Prabhupada Ki. Go back to Vrinda Ki. Thank you. 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 Thank you.